In this episode of Coffee with Trailmeister, we ride a trail in Washington, Robert gets the horse trailer ready for another season of trips, we examine some useful horsey bling, and then Robert meets the guy who invented a revolutionary grooming tool. I'm Celeste. And I'm Robert. Together, we travel the nation in pursuit of the best horse camps, spectacular horse trails, equine tools, deliver the tops in riding tips, and we'll meet the most interesting people along the way. Not only will we be traveling the nation, we'll be doing it with you, our viewers. Join us on the adventure that we call Coffee with Trailmeister. Every time you hook up your horse trailer, it's a good idea to give it a good once over, especially at the beginning of the riding season when things may have happened over the winter months. Your horses may appreciate it. The very first thing that I check are my tires. My horses' lives are riding on them, so I want to make sure that they're up for the job. My big three items to check for in tires are condition. Do they have dry rot? Are there chunks out of the tire wall? Tread depth. Are they going to grip the road? And how much air is in them? So tire pressure. All really good things to check, at least for me. These tires seem to be in pretty solid shape with no indications of dry rot or structural failings. The next step is to check the tread depth. To check tread depth, I use the penny rule. To use this quick check, stick a penny into your tire tread with Lincoln's head upside down. If you can see Lincoln's entire head, then you have less than 2 30 seconds of an inch of tire tread left it's time to get new tires. Hmm. I think I may have dodged a bullet here. I'm going to take the horses out for the first ride of the season tomorrow. And uh, I thought I should check the uh, tire pressure on the horse trailer. I'm glad I did because this is reading 24 pounds per square inch. Not the 80 PSI that both the tire and the trailer manufacturer information plate recommends. So I'm glad I checked my <laughs> tire pressure on the horse trailer. Maybe you should do the same. Happy trails. Don't forget the spare tire after you checked all the others. This one is just as important. It's a sad state of affairs, but the fact is trailer tires are more apt to fail from old age than they are from use. You're never going to wear these things out, at least most people. But how to tell how old your trailer tires are? Eh, it's actually pretty simple. Let's check it out. A quick check of your tire's sidewall will give you an identification number. The last four digits represent the week and the year the tire is manufactured. In this example, the four digit tire ID number reads 2805, which means that the tire was manufactured on the 28th week of 2005, making it now over 12 years old. Uh-oh. Tire life varies by manufacturer, but the average recommended age for replacement is between 7 and 10 years. Double uh-oh. Ouch. Looks like new trailer tires may be in order. Now that we have a new set of trailer tires and an empty wallet, let's do a quick inspection of the rest of the trailer before we head out. It may seem like a no-brainer now, but check your lights so that you can see and be seen. You'll be kicking yourself if you're driving at night and your lights don't work properly. It's important to see and to be seen. It may seem like a no-brainer, but check your... Once you're done with the outside of the trailer, it's a really good idea to give the inside of the trailer a good look over to make sure that unwanted critters haven't made new homes for themselves since you used the trailer last. Since you're already on the inside of the trailer, now's a great time to pull those mats and make sure that the floor is in good condition. Trailer checks, bam, completed. They're easy to do. The floors, the tires, the electrical system. Make sure that there aren't other critters in there beside your horses. Um, if you find anything that needs fixed, Either take care of it yourself if you feel comfortable or send it in. Me, I send everything in for the professionals to handle. But I think it's important that we do these checks before a ride. And at this point, I'm pretty confident that Celeste is going to have a safe and uneventful trip to her ride tomorrow. So trailer checks are done. <laughs>
blinker fluid? Now that Robert has the trailer ready to go, it's time to visit the McKenzie Conservation Area in Eastern Washington. The McKinsey Conservation Area sits near the Washington-Idaho border just a half hour from downtown Spokane in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Riders making the trip to McKinsey will find a modest but perfectly acceptable parking area. At only 462 acres, the area makes up for its small size with impressive views, easy access, and about five miles of wonderful trails. Perfect for a day ride. Riders here won't be disappointed as they travel through an upland evergreen forest of cedar, fir, and pine. Riders visiting during the spring months will find a few muddy spots on the trail. In these damp areas, you may also spot a different kind of horse tail, Equisetum. It's a plant that likes wet areas and kind of looks like a horse's tail. Many of the trails here are old logging roads that volunteers have transformed into hiking and riding trails. These well-maintained paths will transport you through a forest that is recovering very nicely from past logging operations. The landscape here is really quite diverse, ranging from wetlands and ravines to knolls and ridges. When you're riding here, you'll really notice how the vegetation changes along with the terrain. The many rocky outcroppings scattered throughout the park offer spice to the ride and many of them offer fabulous views of Mount Spokane to the north. From this more arid high point of the park, the trail drops down toward the lake. Along the way, you'll pass by the edges of a wetland where water-loving trees such as cedar and aspen thrive. And if you visit in the early morning, you may get lucky and see deer or moose feeding along the edges. Other creatures that will be watching you trying to see them include bear, elk, and cougar. Chances of seeing these shy animals are slim, but seeing signs of the passage is quite common if you keep your eyes peeled. You want a good ride? Great ride at McKinsey! As you arrive at the lake, don't miss the native plant garden at the lake shore. It was installed by school children and it's home to a large community of plants that can be found naturally in the region. It's also a nice place for a quick break near the impressive turtle-shaped rock that's nearby. The very aptly named Turtle Rock overlooks the over 3,000 feet of shoreline that the park provides. The old roadbed continues west along the wetlands before we find a single track trail and then head uphill. The grade here is pretty steep. You'll gain over 250 feet in less than one quarter mile distance, so your pony should be in good shape. From this area of the park, you'll really enjoy the views through the trees to the lake below. I love the scenery. The lake, the rocks, it's awesome. I like the trails at McKenzie. Newman Lake down below, awesome view up on the top here. Pretty, pretty. Well, there, the trails here, there's probably about five to six miles of trails here, but you can do a figure eight or you can do a loop. The bugs today have been pretty bad. I mean, luckily there's an occasional breeze, but I tell you what, bring some fly spray to keep the bugs off. I think this wind is indicating there's a storm coming pretty quick. Here's the top of the park at approximately 2,450 feet above sea level and 280 feet above Newman Lake far below us. It's pretty spectacular. Rounded border-like masses are common on this ridgeline. These worn granite outcroppings have been broken down by time and rain over the eons. 
as you complete the loop on the way back to the parking area, you'll notice not only the well-signed trails, but also the continued viewpoints along the way. Thanks for riding with us at McKinsey. For more information, visit us on the web. So Celeste, when you were on your ride, I saw that you had a tag clipped on your saddle. What was that thing? An ice tag. Ice tag, as in vanilla and ice, ice baby. Boom, 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 boom. No. Immigration and Customs Enforcement? No again. I am at a loss. Ice says in what? In case of emergency. Oh, in case of emergency. And tell me more. Sierra View Ranch designed an ICE ID tag to clip with these fantastic scissor clips onto a horse's saddle. May I? Please. So it's got the scissor clip. It looks pretty skookum strong. It's like got a nylon tag, and then it has this heavy vinyl material that has your horse name, the owner's name, ice contact information, your even your veterinarian's name. So all the stuff that you would want to have available in case a ride became uh, eventful and you got separated so you could be reunited with your animal. Pretty snazzy. Exactly. Plus, they came up with a new product, the Ultralight Ice Tag, with this very thin but sturdy and strong carabiner. Very nifty. Same concept with the Velcro in the back, information on the inside. So if you want something a little bit lighter, the Ultralight is for you. So the clip-on and the Ultralight. You know, these are great ideas. Um, in my uh, clinician life uh, across the nation during a lot of our classes we talk about emergency preparedness for trail riders and specifically about the need to have some type of ID on you and your animal in case something happens so this seems like great ideas so Sierra View Ranch you said makes these yes very cool but I understand that there is more but wait there's more and that is? That is the mainstay. The mainstay. The mainstay, as the name implies, stays on the main or tail with this very uh, sturdy spring-loaded hook. Very cool. And you don't have to have the luxurious thick mane that Minning does in order for that to stay on a mane or tail of a horse or mule or other mm -hmm. animal. But you need more than what I have. Yes, just a little little thicker than you. I just, yes. I just put it on my gear. Now you can be identified and reunited. So, same information as the other ice products, but it clips on the mane or tail. So, great for around the farm, around the ranch, around the paddock type deal when they aren't working. Nifty. But I understand that there's yet more. There is, but wait, there's even more. And we have to go out to the barn to check that out. Celeste, who is this? This is Minning. She's my cover girl and best trail horse in the world. What we have on her head is a ice halter. The ice halter is in case of emergency, has an information tag in the event that we get separated, we can get reunited safely. And it's a nice, bright, um, several different color options. But on a dark bay horse like Minning, this bright, cheery lime green is perfect to be seen. Uh, it's a three quarter inch nylon, which is durable and adjustable, both on the nose and across the top, the pole. For trail riders, what may be lacking here uh, is obviously the throat latch. So there's no security as, as far as keeping this on her if you want to tie up. This halter has a nice padded nose band, which is very comfortable for the horse across the nose. So those are our thoughts on the Sierra View Ranch ice products. They're pretty nifty. You can find out more about the Sierra View Ranch products at iceproducts.net. What's in the next segment? For our interview segment, we're going to talk with Jay Michelson 
of hands-on gloves. He is actually the, the inventor of the devices. And Celeste, if you remember uh, last year at the Pomona Horse Expo, you met the hands-on crew and they gave you a pair of gloves and that's how we got introduced. And I love those gloves. Me too. Uh, they pretty much re replaced everything in our grooming kit. Uh, all the curries, all the brushes, or a lot of the brushes, definitely all the curry combs. Uh, it was a real joy to be able to talk with Jay at the Kansas Horse Expo earlier this year. Uh, great stories, great information. I think you'll enjoy it. Let's go to Kansas and check it out. What do you do with hands-on? <laughs> I developed hands-on. As a kid growing up, bathing, grooming horses and dogs all my life, I wondered why we were using the same antiquated tools, the curry combs, the mitts that fall off, especially when you put a little soap and water on them. But as a kid, I wondered why we kept using these. Why we didn't have our natural born fingers in the action. So as an adult, I stepped out and said, we're gonna change this. So how long did it take you? How hard it, was it to develop these? It took literally four and a half years to um, figure out how to get the nodules on, the best combination of nodules, and how to keep them on, not falling apart, all of that. I've tried these. Yes. And I like them. Yeah. And we've talked. Yep. I was quite skeptical yes. at first. Oh yeah. But I haven't been able to break them, and they've become kind of a go-to tool for yes. me. Yeah. Both in the back country as well as in the in the tack box. Yes. Can you tell us some of the testing that you went through to to make these? We went through all kinds like of testing. Four years, we, you said. Yeah, four and a half years of testing. And speaking of trying to break them, we. Um, Ran over them with tractors, I lifted weights with them, I did pull-ups in the barn with them, we walked horses over them, and the tractor thing we did on the concrete, the caliche, man grass, we just kept running them over, um, stuck them out on 110 degree Texas heat pipe fence, and sat them out there all day long, kept moving them to a you know hot spot, and uh, all day long, can't melt them. If you end up hanging them on a pipe fence, you'll be all right. <laughs> just to let me sum up, yes. from a kid, you thought the tools we've been using for thousands of years yes <laughs> weren't yeah. adequate a little antiquated <laughs> and you were gonna fix it yes overnight that's pretty preposterous yes <laughs> but I'm glad you did how long have these been on the market and available um, uh, February last year uh, we launched so this is our one year anniversary Wow yeah and you're at a bajillion of these equine events around yes. the country spreading the word yes yeah so where can people get them if they don't come to one of these events you can get them online at handsongloves.com you can get them at state line tack um, dover schneiders and ace hardware just picked them up so they'll be in ace stores pretty soon they're in limited tractor supply stores um, so they're all over and, oh, okay. and growing fast so the list all goes of your on and on. Better suppliers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so here's another question. So, yes. obviously, we're in a horsey type environment. Yes. But horse folks have dogs as well. Yep. I've used these on my dogs and my cats. Yep. Uh, the cats tolerate them, but they barely tolerate me. Yes. <laughs> uh, the dog loves them. Yep. But I hear you've done stuff with elephants. Yes. Yeah, and that was part of the testing process as well. We sent the gloves to anybody. And so everybody. wait a minute. Wait. A minute. You're hmm. designing something ostensibly for horses, for but you're testing it on elephants. We quickly realized that it uh, works from aardvarks to zebras. And Have you tested it on an aardvark? Not on the aardvark, but I guarantee it'll work. All right. <laughs> I'll get on that. But the zebras we just got in last show, um, this lady couldn't touch her zebras. She bought them um, in Pomona, went home that evening. She said she can't even touch her zebra with a cloth. And she put video um, on our Facebook page of her rubbing that zebra with the gloves, and he was standing there loving it. <laughs> wow. So, but going back to the elephant, um, that's Ty. He's a movie star elephant. He was in Water for Elephants and a bunch of other big movies. Um, but we sent the gloves to them to test, and when we went out to shoot them, we shot video of them. In their wash stall, they had all of their other... Um, bathing products out. They're just using hands-on gloves because the elephants loved them. It worked better for their skin and uh, it's just a perfect combination. <laughs> Hi, my name is Robert and I'm the Trailmeister. So, last year in Sacramento, yes. you you graciously let me try out a pair of black yep. and my wife a pair. Yep. And I was skeptical. Yep. The And I've since become a convert. Yes. You know, I've tried to break these for the past year. It hasn't happened. Yep. They've become my go-to tool, both in the back country and in the front country. Yes. My only complaint yep. 
isn't really a complaint, but rather a, a suggestion. Yep. I only have one left because it's black and yep. I lost it in the woods. Yep. Thank heavens it's right hand, so I'm so still, you still functional. still can go, okay. But I see that you have bright colors now. Yes. Bright, happy colors. Yes, and that's the thing. We, we added color and sizes, so we, we're not just medium and large now. This is actually a small and black, but okay. we now have Junior for the kids. Junior the for the kids. Involved, Wait a minute. Important. Aren't there child labor laws? No, not in horse country. Not in horse country. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then all the way up to extra large. So Wonderful. You can see the black. <laughs> Go for green. You won't lose them in the woods. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Jay, where can people find out more about Hands on Gloves? Handsongloves.com. Um, Don't learn. tell me. Tell the Handsongloves.com. <laughs> Handsongloves.com. Love trail riding and camping? Like and subscribe to our channel to see more of Coffee with Trailmeister and visit trailmeister.com for the largest and only accurate guide to horse trails and camps across America, riding tips, and even more. Want more? We'd love to tell you what's on the next episode, but we don't even know yet. Send us your ideas via comments and Facebook, and while you're on the computer, sign up for our free newsletter.